anyway. Giafone moves high on Sharp. Saw some sparks coming off the back of Giafone's car. The car's so low, touching the ground. Look it inside. Hold your line. Whoa! Oh, it takes two of them to the wall. Giafone and Sharp. Takagi does continue on. Actually ended up with Castro Neves down on the inside, too. 191st lap, nine to go. And it's exactly what you said at starting, Scott, that it's just a small lapse, just the smallest mistake. There's Giafone. He looks fine, probably wondering what happened. Once the drivers put their visors up, take the steering wheel off, and you can see the visor is up right now, and Giafone, you saw him moving. They know the drivers are fine. Now watch, Takagi's on the bottom, he gets down on that white line, the car starts to wiggle, he then touches sharp, which takes him right into Giofoni. There just was not enough real estate room there, Paul, for all three of those guys to go through. Takagi now, over on the far there. Now watch how low his car is, down on the ground, gets past that white line, the back end came around on him, just touched sharp, and at 215 or 20 miles an hour, it does not take much to throw these cars off of balance. Here you go, the back end of the car just touches them, and off they go. Big mark on the word Delphi from Takagi's right front. And he takes Giafone as an innocent bystander up to the wall. Now they're all going towards the same piece of real estate there. Nobody will take their foot off, as we mentioned a moment ago, because with this many laps left in the race, you know you can't lose momentum. What a great catch down here in the bottom apron. Brian Herta and Castro Nevis did a great job there without even touching each other. Tell you what, that transition from the 24-degree bank to the pit lane road, it's pretty severe. So catching the car there was a big deal. And that was one of the things that Brian Barnhart said in the meeting this morning, don't go below that white line because if you do, you'll end up having an incident. Gary Gerald. Tom Kelly is down here. You've had a chance to look at those replays. What goes through your mind? What are you thinking right now when you see this well, crushing defeat? I think it's just idiotic for Takagi to try to pass below the white line going into three. I mean, you just cannot go three wide. And unfortunately, it took two cards out of the race doing it. Thank you, sir. Yep. Cost that man a lot of money. Not only the potential prize that he was going to have, but the cost of the car, because that car looks in pretty bad shape. On fourth, Takagi. Watch this. He takes the draft from the two cars in front, goes towards the inside. See where the white line is? It's in the middle of the car. There's just no chance of him actually being able to have an opportunity to go through there and make that through through it cleanly. Well, you hit exactly on the key, way down on the white line. Jerry Punch. Down in the uh, Modon pits, Peter Parrott's a team manager for both uh, Felipe Giafone and Tor Takagi. And uh, Peter, that's, that's what you don't want to see, your two team, two team cars involved in an incident caused by another. Uh, no, not really. That's a little bit unfortunate. They're both going, uh, going for the front, and uh, I guess there's too many cars for the same real estate there. It's just unfortunate. Torres below the white line. He was complaining of a push. Did that have an involvement with what happened on the racetrack? Yeah, I really don't know what uh, Torres' problems were, but obviously he was down low. But it's one of those things. I mean, uh, what are you going to do? It's racing, I guess. It's racing. Mo Nunn, the owner of those cars, just shook his head, got on his bike, and started pedaling toward the care center. Paul? Now, the question, too, is whether or not there's any damage. Wouldn't appear to be on Torres Takagi's right front. Scott? Now, as you watch this here, we're going to move along here. The cars have already touched. You can see what ends up happening. He ends up taking them through. Now, we're going to go back and look at this. And as we start to enter into the turn, I want you to notice how far below the white line Tora Takagi's car is as we enter in. Now, right here, here's the white line. Look at his wheel. It's already below the white line. That's a 24-degree area that you talked about before, Paul. There's just no way the car will actually be able to take the two angles like that. And Takagi is able to crank the wheel back around to the right and save himself. Well, here comes Castro Nevis and Brian Herta. They both get down on the flat part. And if they touched, it was a very light touch. On board with Still Scott Sharp. Out here, you see, he's getting a bit of a drag. There's somebody on the right-hand side. Inside. 